Hey guys, I'm Teresa Ingalls, and this is Keep It Historic. Well, today I've got my adventure hat on, and we are going to go on a little road trip. I'm taking you to the Washington King Covered Bridge in Stone Mountain Park, Georgia. Well, here we go. Gotta find my keys. <laughs> Now this bridge is located in Stone Mountain Park and there is a fee to get in the park or an annual parking pass, however you would like to do it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get the annual pass since we like to come hiking here and our pass is expired. So we're going to go ahead and re-up. As you watch this video, I'm going to occasionally cut in with additional information about what you're hearing. Sometimes when you do historic research, you find things that are uncomfortable or just more nuanced than the simple storyline can present. So there are three uncomfortable history moments in this story, and you'll get to those later, but back to the bridge for now. So this is the Washington King Bridge. It was built in 1891, but not originally in this location. This bridge was originally constructed in Athens, Georgia to go across the Oconee River. The Oconee was difficult to cross, leading one resident to lament, parties crossing College Avenue must either be good swimmers or navigate on stilts. The solution, of course, was to build a bridge at College Avenue. The total cost was $2,470, and the cost was split three ways, the county, the city, and private investors who wanted to see it happen. Now, the contract for the bridge was awarded to Washington King, and that's significant because Washington came from a long line of bridge builders. In fact, his father, Horace King, was well known already. Horace King was born a slave, and sold in 1830 to John Godwin, a bridge builder contractor who began training him. A new method for wooden covered bridge construction had just been launched in 1820, the Lattice Bridge. This style became central to Horace King's bridges. Horace became extremely proficient and well respected in bridge building. Uncomfortable history moment number one. Horace King was a slave and he was considered the property of somebody else and had no rights of his own. And that is just never gonna be okay. And no one should have to experience what he experienced in that. But he also had some experiences that were not typical of the slave experience that we're told. He was educated in Ohio. He was given a trade as a bridge builder, and because of that trade was afforded some independence to be able to travel, make money, and do work for all of these different bridge building projects. When he was emancipated in 1846, he actually stayed relatively close to his former owner and continued to work with him on bridge projects. When Godwin died in 1859, Horace actually bought the monument to go on his grave with the inscription, this stone was placed here by Horace King in lasting remembrance of the love and gratitude he felt for his lost friend and former master. And that is just really unique and also uncomfortable. John Godwin eventually freed Horace in the 1840s. Horace went on to train his sons, all freedmen, in the same lattice bridge construction methods. His son, Washington King, who lived in Athens for decades, built a number of bridges using this method, including this bridge. Uncomfortable history moment number two. Washington King is most likely the builder of this bridge, but possibly not too. 
In September 1890, the Athens Weekly Banner said that the bridge contract was awarded to Contractor King. But then in an article in March 1891, it says the contract has been awarded to a Mr. Dunaway, who, as I understand it, was the commissioner at the time. It's very possible that King was contracted under this commissioner and that he did the actual bridge work himself. In fact, the commissioner credits his work in other times in Athens as saying that he had signed off on it. But it is just kind of strange that King isn't mentioned in this 1891 article. One of the unique things about this bridge is the pedestrian walkway, the three and a half feet of pedestrian walkway that they leave on the other side. So we can safely go together. In 1908, the city of Athens got 12 inches of rain in a matter of hours. The river flooded and they lost all of the covered bridges due to that destruction, including this bridge. So this bridge, we actually don't know how much of the original 1891 structure was was saved for the 1908 reconstruction, but we do know that Washington King was part of that reconstruction, and so he got to rebuild the bridge to his specifications. In 1964, the bridge was once again damaged by high floodwaters, and it was deemed unsafe for traffic. So in 1965, it was sold for $1 to the Stone Mountain Memorial Association with the hopes that it would be rebuilt in their newly formed park. Now it's a little bit of a bummer that this bridge has been moved around and had to been reconstructed, so it's lost some of its original integrity, but it's still true to form for the original bridge, and I think being in a public park like it is has an advantage. Just over here, there's a sign that the park has erected explaining the history of the King family and their importance in bridge building in Georgia. And if it weren't part of this park, it may not be a history that gets told. Uncomfortable history moment number three. Now I'm really grateful that this interpretive signage was placed in the park next to the bridge, but it was really recent, just in 2019. And it's important that this African-American bridge builder is recognized partly because of the history of Stone Mountain itself. In 1915, the Ku Klux Klan reorganized in a massive ceremony on top of Stone Mountain and burned a massive cross as part of that event. Shortly thereafter, the owner of the mountain and that quarry gave the mountain to the Daughters of the Confederacy with the intent of building a memorial carving on the side of it. It was decided that the carving would be of three Confederate leaders, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and Jefferson Davis. He started the carving work in 1923, but got fired from that project, and so it remained unfinished. The carver went on to then carve Mount Rushmore, and Stone Mountain sat unfinished for decades. At the height of the Civil Rights Movement, interest in Stone Mountain resurfaced and the state organized the Stone Mountain Memorial Association to buy the, the mountain, memorializing the Confederacy. Martin Luther King Jr. cited it in his I Have a Dream speech in 1963, saying, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. A year later, in 1964, the carving of the mountain resumed the park opened in 1965, and that was the same year that the bridge was brought to the park. 
and when it was brought, there was a historic marker placed next to it that didn't mention anything about unique history of it being built by an African-American businessman. It wasn't until 2019 that the bridge was renamed the Washington King Bridge and that more comprehensive signs were finally placed. So I'm thankful to the park for keeping this historic bridge in such good shape and providing a place where the King family of bridge builders can be remembered. Well, if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Every little bit of support really helps me continue to do these tours, these interviews, bringing you videos about historic buildings in our area. And it really would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Please like, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.